Great. Yes. Well, I am really pleased to speak to you today about this topic that is so important to me. I spent most of my career in academia and my clinical specialty is actually community public health nursing. As a community public health clinician, I worked in a variety of settings with disenfranchised populations. And in those settings, my work was embedded in helping underserved individuals navigate complex health problems in a system that did not address their unique needs. And I think that passion for serving the underserved is what drew me to this interest in supporting NCLEX success. Because it's been my experience, and it's also reported in the literature, that when individuals fail NCLEX, they are underserved. We just don't have systems in place to support them. These are my learning outcomes for my presentation. I've been working in this space of supporting NCLEX success for over a decade. I've worked both in the academic side with students who have not tested ready to pass NCLEX and in academic leadership positions with creating infrastructure to support NCLEX readiness and NCLEX success. And then in addition, I have a business, I've had it for about 10 years, uh, my business is NCLEXRx.com. I do NCLEX coaching. And in that work, I used to call it tutoring, but it really is coaching. Um, I emphasize working with clients who have experienced NCLEX failure. Um, I've also written a book outlining a guide for NCLEX retest success. So in this presentation, I want to explain what I've learned about the impact of NCLEX failure and you know why it's not fair. Sometimes I have people say to me, you know, why do you do that work? Like if somebody doesn't pass NCLEX, why should they be a nurse? And I want to explain to you why that is not my belief in any um, way, shape, or form. Okay, so um, let me begin um, with a perspective on the scope of the issue. Um, I believe most everybody on the call today is from the U.S. Um, as you know, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing provides NCLEX pass rate data. Um, they provide it by RN program type for U.S. educated candidates. Um, and the RN program types are so diploma associate bachelors. Um, they break it down for each. But what I have on this slide for you, um, I just put them all together. Um, and you'll see in 20, um, 21, 82% of all U.S. educated um, graduates had first time passed. 2022, 80%. Here we see in the first half of 2023, um, a higher pass rate. As you all know, um, next generation of NCLEX um, launched April 1st, 2023. We have seen higher pass rates since that. But here you will see, this is a slide actually, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing had their annual meeting uh, about three weeks ago. This is one of the slides from that presentation. I know the X and Y axis are difficult to read, but this is the percentage. Here, this is 80%, this is 90%. Um, this axis shows the time. So this begins 2011. Um, and what you see here, is there have been these fluctuations. I'm not going to go into the reasons for them, but you know we have dipped down below um, the 80s and we have actually dipped. Um, this is kind of a record high, but uh, they did indicate at the conference last week, they anticipate these fluctuations will continue um, and that there were a number of factors extraneous factors contributing to this increase that we saw in the first quarter of 2023. So what does this mean in terms of numbers, these percentages? Um, what this means is that we had in 2021, 32,204 individuals who were not successful on their first NCLEX attempt um, and then you can see 2022, even for the first half of 2023, almost 18,000. These are the people I really care about. Um, so let's look at, and mo um, also, yes, I'm sorry. Um, 
this shows um, practical nurse pass rates. I think the most everybody in the call today is in RN programs, but you see that the um, pass rates are, there's some similarities, a little bit of an increase and still numbers, high numbers. These are the individuals who did not pass. Now, you'll know that one of the reasons that first time pass is important is because first time pass is a benchmark for approval for schools of nursing. And um, I'm also, I got started a few minutes, so I'm gonna skip over this because again, most everybody on the call is in uh, academia and would know this information. There are psychological consequences to not being successful on NCLEX. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a later slide, but anecdotally, my experience working with individuals who experienced failure confirms what's reported in the literature. And that is candidates who experience NCLEX failure suffer from isolation, depression, anxiety, hopelessness, powerlessness. These psychological effects do impact retest success. There are also significant financial consequences. If individuals have been hired as a graduate nurse with a temporary practice permit, their NCLEX failure results in loss of their position, a demotion to a lower position and a pay cut. If you're in nursing education, you also know that graduates who struggle through nursing school are less likely to pursue employment before they've passed NCLEX. So their failure is going to mean that they remain unemployed or in a lower paying job while they prepare for NCLEX. They have to wait to retest after a failure. And it kind of coincides with the time that their student loans kick in. So now they have their loan payments at the same time. Um, they're not having any increase in income. So it's really financially devastating. There are also workforce issues. And you'll see in the literature, there's some discussion now, and I have these on the reference on the reference list. I'm not going to go into the weeds of them, but there's some literature describing the impact of NCLEX first time pass rate benchmark on diversity in the nursing workforce. Um, it's a complex discussion outside of the scope of my presentation. But another obvious consequence is the number of nurses lost to the workforce as a result of failure. For example, the first half of 2023, 17,700 nurse RNs lost to the RN workforce at a time when we have dire workforce um, shortfalls. So what happens to those thousands of candidates who don't pass on their first test? They become um, an NCLEX repeat test taker. And you'll see here, that's a concern because what we see is once people get into the cycle of NCLEX repeat, pass rates are low. Now these are not individual attempts. Um, I mean, these aren't reported in the same way, but what's important is the percentage. And you see that less than half of individuals who repeat the RN, um, less than 40%, the practical nurse, are not successful in the repeat. So that's why we really need to pay attention to what we can do to improve NCLEX success. All right, so I'm not going to, again, here, I think I can sort of speed up and not go into a lot of the details. You should be familiar with the NCLEX. Um, and even in other countries, if they're NCLEX, you know, is uh, the licensing exam used for US and Canada. Canada NRBs have their own reporting. They're not in the data that I showed you. And many other countries also have a process of licensure exam. So the principles of high stakes examination does apply. And I wanna say NCLEX is psychometrically sound. Um, the National Case Council um, assures that it's a valid and reliable test that matches entry level practice. I'm not here to argue anything related to that, but I just wanna show you some nuances related to the exam that do impact success, um, not related to an individual's um, 
knowledge of nursing. So the NCLEX exam is a CAT exam. It's a unique attribute. The questions are delivered based on the ability of the candidate, uh, pass or fail. So any exam question that is, that is on the NCLEX is um, identified by the National Council as either um, below, at, or above passing level question. And so the exam will deliver a question at passing level. If the candidate enters it, cor it answers correctly, the degree of difficulty goes up. Here you're above passing level. You miss a question, you go down. You miss a passing level question. Now you're below passing level and have to work your way back up. This exam goes like this, um, anywhere between 85 and 150 questions. If the candidate taking the exam is answering questions above the passing level at or above correctly, the exam will shut off at 85 questions the individual has passed. If they're below, it'll shut off at 85 questions as a failure. If the exam you know, is going, the, the uh, computer adaptive testing is not able to determine above past 85 questions, it continues to deliver questions up to 150. So when the exam shuts off at 150 questions, the candidate has either passed or failed. But the important thing is when it goes to the end, it is the last few questions that determine pass or fail. It's not an overall cumulative. So it is imperative that when taking the NCLEX exam, candidates can stay focused and not miss passing level questions because of things like reading or analysis errors. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about factors that impact NCLEX success that are outside of the candidate's knowledge and abilities to provide safe, competent nursing practice, nursing care. Okay. Um, so some of these are reported in the literature. Some are from my experience working with individuals who have not been successful. And I'm going to say that one big factor is test anxiety. We know that nursing school incites and accelerates test anxiety. This is documented in the literature. By graduation, many students who entered nursing school as well-balanced, non-stress individuals find themselves just a hot mess. And so we move from that to this high stakes NCLEX exam. Students who take the exam, no matter how prepared they are, they are nervous on exam day. And we all know what anxiety does. It activates our amygdala. It triggers fight or flight. Attention shifts, um, you know, what's going on in our brain, blocks our memory, information recall, problem solving ability. And this is why test anxiety can lead to struggles in NCLEX. So not having a plan to manage anxiety can lead to NCLEX failure. And then the experience of failure only increases anxiety for future attempts. Another example, life. <laughs> you, know, you know that with your students as they progress through the, the, the nursing program, things happen. And collect scheduling rules are complex. Um, they're intimidating. Um, sometimes there's limited avail availability. And so candidates in general are reluctant to push back or reschedule the test. It can be... It, um, the exam can be changed up to 24 hours or one business day. So a Monday exam has to be rescheduled on Friday. Um, but if something happens the day before or even the week before, that can impact NCLEX success. Some examples from clients I've worked with. Um, I had a client whose baby came six weeks early. That happens sometimes. Instead of taking her NCLEX four weeks before her due date as she planned, she took it one week postpartum. She didn't pass. <laughs> I had a client whose two-year-old was up all night with a fever the night before the exam. She didn't pass. Um, gastrointestinal illness, a fender bender on the way to the um, test center. I even worked with a client who became homeless after her um, 
a nursing school graduation. Her parents divorced during her senior year of college. She was a real high performing student, you know, was not on the radar by her nursing program. She had to couch surf until she could pass the NCLEX. Everything going on in her life, she didn't pass NCLEX. And then the devastation of um, being, you know, further in that cycle. Every In every case, the failure is devastating and it just perpetuates this risk of falling into the vortex of repeating failure. And so I'm going to talk to you about why we need to reach out and provide support. Um, and another factor that is a significant factor that um, this relates to the CAT test um, is being able to be focused for the duration of the test. Nothing in our lifestyle supports focus. In general, our students have about a 20 second attention span. That's literature from Gen Z's. Um, I've worked with many clients who had solid knowledge content, but their NCLEX prep was, you know, they had a product on their phone um, before bed, you know, I'll do 10 questions at break, at work, I'll do 20 questions and never practiced the focus that is required for a two to three hour testing session. I tell my clients, you cannot train for a marathon by running sprints. And the same applies to NCLEX preparation. I've worked with many candidates who did well in nursing school, but they didn't have the luxury of NCLEX prep as a full-time job. So they were you know, juggling it around night shift work or childcare responsibilities and then we're not able to sustain the focus required. You make a reading error on a passing level question, you're below passing level. The literature cites knowledge gaps as the most common factor that contributes to NCLEX difficulty. In my experience, this is true. I've had many clients who have test taking um, not or their major knowledge gaps, but um, even if there's minor knowledge gaps, those have to be addressed. The CAT test will find them. I've had clients who, you know, like had maybe a life event in the semester they took PEDS. And so, you know, they were just weak on PEDS um, and the CAT test will find your weaknesses. So I do work with clients in addressing their knowledge gaps. That's really important. But um, I put it here at the end to note that it's not the only reason that people aren't successful. What happens when you don't pass NCLEX? It's devastating. And the other problem is our candidates who don't pass NCLEX, they have nowhere to turn. They've graduated from their school of nursing. There's no support for ongoing um, assistance after their failure. They're graduated, they're on their own, we're done with them. Um, they may be embarrassed to even tell anybody about their failure. They're reluctant to reach out to a faculty in their school of nursing, even though it will get reported to the school. <laughs> I find many candidates don't know that, but we don't have anything in place for them. If they've been hired by a healthcare organization, in my experience working with clients, the healthcare organization doesn't offer any support. They just like, let us know when you pass and we'll get you rehired as an RN. So maybe people have some idea of what went wrong, but most clients who find their way to me don't know what went wrong or how to even decipher what went wrong. So they just prepare the same way and do the same thing, hoping for a different outcome. So adding to the emotional toll of embarrassment and isolation, you can see why people feel alone and um, with nowhere to turn. So this is where we need to step in and provide support. You know, we're not addressing the masses. These are the underserved population of our nursing school students and nursing school graduates. We're super happy for the 80 to 90% of candidates who pass on their first attempt. But my story for you here today is about nursing school graduates who get lost to the profession 
when they experience failure, have nowhere to turn and end in the cycle of repeated NCLEX failure. Um, so I wanna end here with some recommendations on supporting. First of all, for best practice strategies for schools of nursing. And again, there's some um, literature, actually lots of literature about this. I just added some newer publications. It's important for schools of nursing to consider best practice for improving NCLEX readiness outcomes. Um, looking at predictors of NCLEX readiness that are reported in the literature and using your own data to evaluate your own program predictors, helping faculty to engage with, with supporting students. You may hear faculty say, I'm not teaching to the test. It's not why I'm here. But NCLEX readiness is not about teaching to the test. We have to accept our contract with students. When they come to our school of nursing, we have an obligation to support their NCLEX readiness in all circumstances. If we identify characteristics of a student that concern us regarding their readiness for safe and effective nursing practice, it's our obligation to direct to address that within our program policy, not to just move the student through and say, oh, well, NCLEX will be the gatekeeper. So something to consider, and again, something that has also been reported in the literature. We need to identify and support students who might demonstrate particular risk. And, you know, many schools of nursing use NCLEX prep products that can identify students who are not meeting benchmarks. Um, of course, it's going to be your students who didn't test well in the program who are likely to not pass NCLEX, but don't blame the students, okay? Take a look at what you can do in your program to support them. Where I work at York College, we consistently enjoyed an overall pass rate at around 85%. But I was part of a system to champion efforts towards those 15% who were at risk. And we put some things in place. And when we did that, our pass rate climbed to 95%. I've written about these strategies. I've, um, they're on the reference list. We developed a support course for students who came out of the fundamentals course looking like they were at risk. Um, we also did one-on-one -on -one faculty coaching and so that every one of our graduating seniors who did not meet benchmark on the NCLEX predictor exam at graduation provided, and most of it actually was done by me, as I got ready to approach my retirement, we brought two other faculty in who now continue to do it. But one-on-one -on -one faculty coaching, we pulled each one of those students, they met with me, we worked at identifying um, their strategy, their knowledge gaps, creating systems for them. And among the co cohort of 167 high-risk students, this was over the course of five years, Every one of our students who at graduation did not meet benchmark, we saw a 90% pass rate in that cohort after they received the one-on-one. -on -one. It's the individualized caring support. And then you also need designated leadership for the NCLEX um, preparation interventions and for the infusion of best practice strategies across your curriculum. So in practice, we also need to support NCLEX retest success. For those of you who are not in education, but are in practice, it's important to provide support when a candidate has failed NCLEX. It may be an employee in your, that your organization has hired, a graduate of a school of nursing where you work, or maybe even a friend or a relative. Know that we can't leave people hanging after an unsuccessful attempt. Um, this is an article I wrote that outlines steps for nurses in professional development to support newly hired graduate nurses who have not passed NCLEX. In my work, I've found that healthcare organizations provide limited resources to support graduate nurses who don't pass. Most often, like I said, it's let us know, we'll get you your position back. 
Um, but individuals who are approaching retest success, they need psychological support. And very recently, I have finished, and this um, book is now published, Overcoming NCLEX Failure, a guide to NCLEX retest success. It is difficult for individuals to pay for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, you know, I don't charge much, but I don't, I can't do it for free. Um, so I really wanted to have something that I could provide to individuals that was affordable and that outlines specific steps for approaching retest success. So that was only published just a month ago. Um, so whatever your practice setting, look for opportunities to help and support anyone who's been unsuccessful in NCLEX so that we don't leave any nurses behind. And my references I have here, 